Boy, we need to talk. <laughs> Thomas Miller on the Fun Astrology Podcast, Thursday, October 5th. The reason I say that is that if you follow the Honeycomb Collective Almanac like I do, it's a great snapshot of exactly what's going on up there right now. And you can follow it easily. You can take notes with it. It's a great way to plan out the month. I use it, obviously, as a tool for the podcast, but not the only tool. But if you look at the Honeycomb Almanac today, you just see one main thing, and that is that the moon enters Cancer this morning about 8.30 Eastern Time. And yes, for you East Coast early birds, it will be void, of course, when you get up. But that doesn't tell the whole story, because when you cast today's chart, what you see is a myriad of sacred geometry of some sort in there. I don't know. You see a lot of oppositions and a lot of trines and sextiles, and I mean, there is wow. Even the yods are still there. So we have four quincunxes, five quincunxes. A bunch of sec. I mean, it's just incredible, this chart. Now, obviously, Tuesday afternoon, big news when the U.S. House of Representatives voted to oust Speaker McCarthy. We did videos on that on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram, so you can check those out. But to show you why we have to take this chart so seriously was the second video I did yesterday of the south node of the moon and Mars, that conjunction that is still tight today was in the 11th house of the United States Sibley chart. Okay, so what, you say? Well, what section of the pie, what part of the chart, represents the legislature? The 11th house. The guy that I used to do the radio show with said, I was born at night, but not last night. Now, I let's say that I was born last night. Please explain to me how an alignment in the sky of a country that was created 200 and near 50 years ago, lands exactly where the signature of this alignment, which has not been with us since the late 1980s, lands perfectly on the spot when the United States legislature expels one of its leaders for the first time ever. Go ahead. We'll wait. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're not going to get there with me, I'll tell you that. This stuff is amazing. And in one of the videos I said, it looked like everything just had this fated signature about it, even comparing it to his own natal chart, which we had a good birth time. Now, let's just dive into some of this. And I know it's going to be a little bit air sign heady technical here, but let's just see what we have. So speaking of, the south node of the moon and Mars is now in a grand trine again but this time with the moon. So it will only pass and fade through the day. But the moon at one point of the triangle, south node and Mars at the other, what would be the third one? Saturn. And in fact, for those of you astute, you're saying, but Thomas, it's a kite. It's a kite. Yes, it is a kite because Venus is in sextiles to both the moon and the south node slash Mars. So that does make us a kite as Venus sits on top of it. Venus rules money. Saturn is at the point, the base of the kite. If you were flying the kite, Venus would be at the top and Saturn would be at the bottom. Saturn is about, well, you know what Saturn is about. And then we can take this and, and do what Robert Glasscock does. Take this information, not just as any kind of prediction. Oh, we're going to, you know, all this stuff. Take it and look and compare it to what's going on. The U.S. 10-year Treasury bond, 10-year intermediate term spiked parabolically this week. If you go back and look at the U.S. dollar since mid-July, it has been on a long upward leg. It's at historic highs. And that should tell you something right there. Because if you think about all these global currencies and the BRICS and all this stuff and the people that are trying to move away from the dollar, that the dollar and the promissory note from the U.S. Treasury that says we'll pay you back in 10 years has spiked parabolically. And in reality, the U.S. dollar is worth a dysfunctional Congress and $33 trillion of debt. They said the other day that the U.S. debt increased a quarter of a trillion dollars in one day. That was mostly from compounding interest on that debt, but also for the runaway, unresolved spending that is just completely out of control. So what's in the kite? Venus, the money planet at the top. Saturn. Lord Karma, the planet of be sure your sins shall find thee out. 
then put that against what we already know now about this chart, that this conflict, this past struggle, the thing that caused the last big market crash, now caused the first Speaker of the U.S. House to be kicked out. That's why the beginning of this week I was looking at this chart saying, I don't know what you've got in you, but wow. And how many times have we said the word Uranus this week? So there may be more surprises in store, or like we were saying too the other day, this may be the platform, the basis, if you will, the jumping off the diving board for the eclipses coming up. And let's take even a longer view on that because we have an annular solar eclipse that lapses through part of the southwestern United States. Then we have a total solar eclipse that also swaths through the United States, a much bigger section total in April of 2024. And as mentioned, kind of the junior eclipse this go around is October 28th. It's the partial lunar, but it is in the money, second and other people's money, eighth houses. So the signatures are there for us to be aware. See, if Kevin McCarthy had an astrologer, or if he followed the Fun Astrology and the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology podcast and learned how to read the chart himself, he certainly could have seen these aspects and realized that, uh-oh, once a day, several of these key points, including not only the South Node and Mars, but also Pluto and Saturn and Uranus, Jupiter, are all going to cross through the 11th house of basically his role and purpose in life right now. Maybe he would have made other decisions, compromises, negotiations, etc. But see, this could have changed his behavior and it could have changed his outcome. So for us, we have to realize these things are in the sky. And this is, yeah, this is kind of the warning alert to say, I don't know what to do. But we have a powerful chart that's already shown its hand. We have more coming up. And I'll tell you what governs my life is that I ask for guidance. I just blatantly ask for guidance. And then I tune in and listen for it. But then it gets totally individual because what I might be doing for myself has nothing to do with with what's best for you and your family. We all have to follow our own path, and that's what part of this whole, in fact, Pluto getting ready to move into Aquarius, which we can still sniff and smell the air of, can't we? Is follow your own drumbeat. And actually, that's the best advice, is to not be looking at others for answers. Look within. And today would be a great day to do that looking within, because for the next two days, Luna, our moon, our subconscious soul, our guiding light within, is in its own sign. So it's extra powerful. Great time to be doing it. All right. Hope that helps. Not to be alarmist. Just be awarest. See you back tomorrow. We'll set up the weekend. <laughs> <laughs>